Hey, I'm Nick from Hasty Bake in the Tulsa Grill Store, and this is What's Cooking Wednesday. Today we're going to be cooking some beautiful racks of beef ribs. These are uh, these are cab choice ribs that we got at the local grocer. Uh, absolutely huge. A lot of people call them dino ribs. Run about five to seven dollars a pound right now. Uh, and these are going to be beautiful. We're going to be cooking them on the Hasty Bake at 275 today over pecan smoke, wrapping them up when they get uh, the color we want on them, cooking them till nice and tender, and they're going to be wonderful. But the way we start on them is uh, we want to go ahead and start doing some trimming. So there's not a lot of trimming that's required on these, but you have to remember the hard fat is not going to render. So you want to find a way to kind of make these tops very level and remove some of the hard fat. So I'm going to come in here on this ridge. I'm going to start just making slices try to make this as even as possible. Now you don't want to bake a big old gouge in it, even if there is hard fat down in the gouge because it'll cook uneven. So you may have to cut that away when it's all done. But you try to remove everything you can to make them as uniform as possible and get as much meat contact with the seasoning as possible. We don't bother to pull the membrane on the bottom of the ribs because there's no meat underneath them, so it's a waste of time. We are going to put a light seasoning on it just so if stuff starts to wash off, there's some salt there to soak in. Uh, but we're not worried about really seasoning it for eating because there's no meat down there. We're going to start off by using a base layer of duck fat. Duck fat has a nice browning effect. Uh, it also keeps the meat nice and moist. It acts as a great slather for the seasoning that we're going to put on. Uh, and it's a lot lighter than olive oil, so it doesn't kind of get pulled up and then really overly sticky. And it goes on really smooth. Kind of like an aerosol can almost. Going to rub that down. Going to hit both sides with duck fat. And what I always say is you got to do the ugly side first when you're seasoning because that's when you're going to flip it back over. It's going to get a little messed up when it's on the table but the pretty side will stay up, that's your presentation side. So we start with the ugly side first, get some duck fat on the bottom there. Today we're going to be using cattle call beef and all seasoning and rub. It's a uh, salt, pepper, garlic with some great uh, herbs, some great citrus notes. It's made for beef, it'll have a great darkening effect when it's all said and done. It'll give you that kind of nice dark black Central Texas style bark that you want on your beef ribs. We're just going to hit a real light layer on the bottom just to let the salt kind of do to go to work on the bottom membrane. If you have standalone kosher salt handy, you can do a kosher salt layer on the bottom of your beef ribs too. The idea is just to dry that membrane out so it'll crisp, it'll kind of crack and pull away, and it'll allow some more smoke into the meat that's around the ribs. As you can see, you got a nice even coat of the seasoning. Nothing's piled up, nothing's hollow, nothing's empty. It's a good even coat all the way around. We did a light coat on the bottom to have that salt dry out that membrane. We hit the edges on it. It's just a nice even coat. This is going to be the perfect amount to get good bark without being too much seasoning in one bite and without only tasting beef and not having anything to enhance the flavor. So this right here is about the coating you want to do on your briskets and on your beef ribs to make sure you're getting the best bark you can. All right, we're back and we're going to get these beef ribs on the Hasty Bake. Our temp's holding about 245 right now, which is perfect. It's going to give us a beautiful amount of smoke with the pecan wood that we have in there and the lump charcoal. Looking forward to getting these things on. We have our heat shield in the Hasty Bake, so you want to make sure you put your meat on top of the heat shield. The reason for that is if you put it over to the side of the heat shield, the fire is going to be coming right out the side of it and blasting your meat. If you put it over the top of the heat shield, that's going to be the cooler spot that's going to allow the smoke to circulate without blasting your meat with fire and cooking the meat before you render all the fat. All right, we're back and we're halfway through this cook. These beef ribs are going to be looking really good right about now. They got some awesome color. They got some wonderful moisture and I'm ready to go ahead and wrap them. So we're going to take a look. That right there is the color we're looking for. It's a nice dark brown, almost blackish mahogany color. Got some good color on the bones. They're pulling back a lot. The fat's rendering out. We're going to go ahead and wrap them in the foil to make sure that they get enough render to come out in that foil so those beef ribs tender up. So we're going to get them over to the table, wrap them up, put them back on this grill, and put them back to bed. These beef ribs are right here. I'm going to go ahead and probably wrap them this way. 
make sure our foil is big enough. And I always like to double wrap, especially when you have something with bones in it, because you know that that bone is gonna try to pierce your foil. We don't wanna make all the juice come out. We wanna make these things as tight as possible. One trick of the trade is making sure as you're wrapping that you're making sure that foil is really, really, really tight up against the bark, that there's no pockets where juices can form. Because if you get a pool of juice in the bottom, it's gonna end up steaming up into your meat and it's gonna soften the bark and make your meat or your uh, bark soft. As long as you have it really tight against there, all the juices that would normally come out into the foil, they're gonna go ahead and go back into the meat. They're gonna stay leaving your meat juicy, but leaving your bark nice and dry. And we're back. The cook is done. We've go ahead and pulled these off. They're about 200 to 203 degrees. If you cook at a lower temperature, like at 240 to 250, you can normally pull them around the 200 degree mark. If you're cooking them a lot hotter, like around 300, you're gonna have to pull them a little further, like around 205 to 210. The key is making sure when you probe them with your thermometer that they're nice and tender. You can move the thermometer around a little bit, figure out if the meat's gonna rip a little bit. That makes it lets you know that it's gonna be really nice and tender. The bark is set, these look really good. I've let them rest now for about 45 minutes on the table. We kinda wanted to let some of the steam out so that they're not gonna continue to cook and end up being mush. Uh, and you wanna let all those juices that have ran to the middle of that meat distribute throughout the meat. So it's time to cut. And move one rack to the side and pull these out. Now it's good that they hold up onto their own weight. You don't want them completely falling apart. And you look and we've achieved our goal on the bark. The bark is nice and firm. It's got a great color on it. They're definitely very jiggly. So we're gonna go ahead and slice. You wanna pay attention to where the bone is on here. Bring your knife in right in the middle and angle it back toward the bone and cut away from it. And there's your money shot right there. This is a nice tender rib. You could actually push your finger through it if you wanted to. You got a good smoke ring. All the fat is, is completely rendered out. It's a very jiggly piece of meat. This is, the, uh, this is the money part of the meat. It's basically brisket point on a bone. It's an absolute favorite of ours around here. That's what you're going for. Cut right through the bone again. One bone is probably way more than one person needs to eat. So I like to say a rack will actually feed a family with some leftovers. But that is exactly what we're going for. You can see that juice pouring out of there. Don't squeeze all your juice out, but it does look good on camera. Beautiful smoke, good temperature. These turned out absolutely wonderful. I can't wait to get into them. I wish you were here. Kind of glad you're not because I get to eat them and you don't. Uh, cook them at home. 250 or so on your grill. Throw them on there. These took about six and a half hours plus your rest. Uh, not too bad and I'm telling you this is one of the best, richest bites you'll ever have. So thanks for joining us for What's Cooking Wednesday and we will see you guys next week.